This is Gox. He makes videos about art. When I watch them, I'm always wondering, well, how did he do that? But I'm not talking about this, this, or even this. I'm talking about his other art, the videos themselves. Well, I needed to find out. And after hours of research, I've discovered five key things Gox does to make his videos look incredible. So today, <clears throat> So today, I'm gonna to reveal those five key things, how anyone can easily transform their videos using them, and give you tips to save time so you can create better looking videos faster. And I'm gonna do all this while trying to create an entire video using these methods. Or rather, he is. I am? Yeah, and you're gonna finish it by the end of this video so they can watch it. You know, I'd love to, but I have tickets to the Taylor Swift movie, so. Can't you just see the Taylor Swift movie later? Okay, fine, can I at least have a bite of that Gox bar? No, these are for me. They make you multiply. But first, we have to talk about equipment, because Gox uses an expensive Sony FX3, a variety of cool lenses, and other gear like a motorized slider. Well, the good news is you don't really need any of that. And to prove it, he'll be using this Sony a7 IV with a 24 to 70 G Master lens and a phone. You're gonna make me use a phone? <laughs> I'm not getting paid enough for this. Oh, I'm not paying you at all. <laughs> what? There are, however, two pieces of equipment Gox often uses that I do think are essential. The first are lights, more on these later. And the second adds depth and texture because light has to pass through it to get to your camera's sensor, which in turn diffuses that light, making it pretty. It's called haze, and there are a few ways we can add it to our image. Gox is using a fog machine, but there are also these cans of haze that do largely the same thing. Another option is a camera filter, like the smoke filter from Tiffin. So let's start with our first key, and in order to explain, you're first gonna need a video script. If you don't have one, get writing. Here's mine. Actually, it's mine. Now we have to come up with the visuals, and that can be hard, right? Because what commonly happens is you have a script, you film some B-roll, and then when you get to the edit, you don't have enough footage. Yeah, but then I just go back and film some more B-roll, or add text, graphics, and clips of cats to fill in the gaps. Cats? Yeah, what else am I gonna do? <laughs> And this works, except for the part about cats, that's weird. But often the end result can feel like putting orange juice in your cereal. Each one of these is good on its own, but they don't go well together. But from what I can tell, the way Gox plans his visuals is a game changer because it'll result in better looking videos and save you time because you won't have to refilm or search the internet for cat videos. I'm calling it mini sequencing and here's how to do it. First, break up the script into logical sections. This can be as short or long as you'd like, just so it makes sense. Then, read each section aloud, timing it. After that, write out little visual stories for each section. By visual story, I mean instead of random B-roll clips, each section is gonna have a visual beginning, middle, and end. Okay, I think I get it. So I have a 13 second section in this script referencing Taco Bell's Mexican pizza. Visually, I'll show myself getting a Mexican pizza, opening it up, and eating it. Great, and now just do each section for the entire script, and no cats. <sighs> Never let me do anything fun. Now that you're ready to shoot, it's time to use these. Gox is an amazing cinematographer. How am I supposed to do this? Can I give up? No, you can't give up. And you're not gonna get to that level without time and practice. But the good news is, knowing how to use lights can get your videos looking better fast. And there's a common way Gox uses them that you could do right now. Hmm. I'd still rather give up. Just take a look at these clips. Where's the main light? Uh, it's on the other side of the camera? Yeah, exactly. But why? Because shadows create more depth and interest. The opposite of this. I think I get it, so I should keep the main light on one side of me and the camera on the other. Oh, hello. You can even get creative with the types of lighting you use, like something Gox loves, a projector. Just find a video with a black background and multiple colors in between like this, add in your haze, and put it behind you. Now, start filming. Gox's videos have a lot of camera movement. Pans, push-ins, tilts, dollies. How am I supposed to do any of that? I'm not using any specialty equipment, and I'm doing this all by myself because you won't help me. Well, there are a lot of camera movements you can't do alone, but here's a couple of fun ideas. If you have a C-stand lying around, you can attach a phone or a camera to get some top-down shots. And then you can loosen the knob here to pan from point A to point B. And here's a time-saving tip. It could be hard to stop on whatever object you're trying to focus on, so instead, film it in reverse and then flip it in the edit. How about those cool, uneasy snorri cam shots? Usually you have to wear a vest, but you can just take a tripod and keep the front two legs short and make the back leg long and stick it between your legs. And it works pretty well. How about those cool shots of Gawk's eating? 
Well, what if you take a light pole, attach a clamp to one end, and a tripod head to the other? Now you can clamp whatever object you want, and the camera will follow it around. Ugh, I hate editing. It takes forever and you have to cut up all the clips and add music and sound effects. It's exhausting. Yeah, but you maybe left out the most important part. Transitions. Where'd you go? There are many types of transitions Gox uses, but there's one that I think is more effective than the rest. And the best part is you can use it in a ton of different ways. Composition, color, or action. Duh, duh. It's called a batch cut and it's pretty simple to do. You just take your clips or your audio and mash them up. Maybe add in a sound effect and that's it. Well, it's a lot to think about. Oh, you don't have time to think about it. You need to finish editing. Because we still have one more thing Cox does in nearly all of his videos. No, don't make me, I don't want to. No, 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 oh. <sighs> Fine. The very last part of editing is when you take an image like this to this. More specifically, Gox color grading, which looks a lot like this. There are plugins like Dehancer, which can quickly give you that film look, but if you don't have that, Here's what you do. Download a reference image you'd like to replicate. Ideally, it has similar lighting and colors to your image. Using the scopes in your editing software, play with the brightness, saturation, and contrast until you get them to match. Or if you have Premiere, you can click Comparison View and then Apply Match, and that should get you well on your way. If you get something you really like, save it as a preset so you can use it in the future. The last step is to overlay grain to mimic that film look. You can find 8, 16, and 35 millimeter grain pretty easily on the internet. And that's it. You should be done with the video, right? Yeah, I'm actually done. Good. Can you help me out of here? Oh yeah, of course. Wait, no, 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 no. So now that you know how Gox makes his videos, click here to learn more tricks about how big YouTubers make their videos look so good. Oh, and it's the video you just watched me make. Hey, come on, get me out of here. I'll let you have a bite of the Gox bar. It's pretty annoying, isn't he?